when you come to the end of your teaching career, there's a good chance you will have some pension in what is called the final salary scheme. So everyone knows what is meant by the final salary, right? Well, yes and no. How can I give two answers? Well, that's because there are two methods. Yes, because most people know about the most obvious method. That is the amount of money you received in the last 12 months. Very simple, you just add up the gross pay for the last year. This is known as method A. It is the simplest, but it is not always the best. So now we come to the other part, the second of my answers. This is the other method, known as method B. It looks through the last 10 years and picks out the best three consecutive years. But, and this is the point at which most people look at me and raise an eyebrow. What are you talking about, they say? My salary has always gone up, so what is the point? Well, this is a list very loosely based on the upper pay range. And as you can see, the actual salary has risen over the years. You look at the graph and the table and you can see that the best three years are the last three years. But the point is that in looking at the last 10 years, the pension scheme does not look at the actual salary. What they do do is to add on inflation first. Since 2012, inflation has totaled about 14.6%. So that 2012 salary that was just under 36,000, when it gets adjusted for inflation, is worth just over 41,000. Now this has happened because teachers on the same pay scale have regularly had pay rises that are below inflation. So they've been regularly losing value against the cost of living. Now all the rest are adjusted for inflation as well. So the blue bars on the graph, your actual salaries, are going to be ignored. It is the inflation adjusted salaries that are used. So looking at just these, we now have to find out which are the three best consecutive years. They do have to be consecutive. But if you look at 2016, for instance, you can see that that is a higher salary than we have in the 2014. But it's not when you look at the other two either side of it or around it. So we have to find the best three that are consecutive. So the average for those three salaries is £40,893. Now notice that's a lot better, £893, than the actual best salary we did have. So what happens now that we have two final salary figures? How do we decide which is the final, final salary? Well, the good news is you get the best of whichever they are. So in this case, it's the method B. And that is almost it. There are a couple of potential pitfalls, um, one in each of the different methods. Method B's pitfall is that it is limited to the last three years. So what happens when we get to 2022? Well, what happens is when you get to 2022, that 2012 figure is outside our 10 years and can no longer be used. So the best three now use lower salaries and the average of these has dropped. So in this example, by around about 300 pound. If this is something that's happening to you, then you can do something about it and you need to look at something called the hypothetical calculation. Method A's pitfall is less of a problem but may still catch you out. If in your last three years your pay was to suddenly shoot up by more than 10%, then your, salary, your final salary will be restricted. The jump here from 39,400 to 60,000 is easily more than 10%. And that means the jump is going to be limited to either 10% of the previous salary, in this case around about 4,000, which would mean you can only claim that last salary as being worth 43,000, or to a fixed amount. Now that fixed amount is sometimes a bit more generous, but it is a fixed amount. In 2022, the fixed amount is £6,272. So in this case, 
the 6,000 figure is higher. Um, so that means the method A salary will be the previous year's salary, 39,400, plus the 6,272 pounds. So instead of 60,000, the final salary is going to be counted as 45,672. Um, they do that to stop schools giving teachers a sudden bonus in that last year, purely to boost their pensions. Um, one thing I would say about this in this regard, if you do suddenly get a pay boost, um, that's a temporary TLR or an acting senior post, then there is something you can do to preserve that in your final salary calculation. You'll need to look at my explanations or ask me about something called the hypothetical calculation. But you may need to act very quickly, um, almost instantly the point at which you drop back down to your regular salary is the time that you need to think about opting out. But you do need to check the numbers. Don't just opt out and say, I've, done, I've told you so. That does not work. You do need to look at the numbers to work out if it works best for you. What you're trying to do is preserve your method A for the last 12 months to see if that's going to uh, give you a better salary. So there you have it. The two calculations. And remember, you get the best of these. Just watch out for that sudden pay rise. Oh, should we be so lucky? Um, you will get a big, big, big increase in your pension. It just may not be as big as you think. And watch out for your final years in your 10 years that your best years falling off that list. So the ones, if you look at your, your benefit statement, if your method B, and it tells you what the last years are, or what years are being used, if they are the ones that are 10 years ago, you do need to have a look and see whether you can create a hypothetical calculation to preserve them for the future. But again, do check the numbers carefully.